the people who constructed this image, this, that was not photoshopped, that picture of Joe Biden. That was a not photoshopped image. I mean, Scar from Lion King, it's insane. Scar from Lion King? <laughs> it's literally just the color red. Okay, it is literally just the color red. Okay, all right, thank you. All right. Uh, my friends, my folks, my beautiful, beautiful, beautiful friends, my little pog champs, as you all know, as you'd better know, uh, Joe Biden delivered uh, a banger of a speech just the other day. Quality, quality stuff. Genuinely a uh, highlight of his presidency so far. And the conservatives are furious. Absolutely seething. Uh, if you've been on Twitter, you've probably seen one or perhaps dozens of the hundreds of Republican politicians and media officials who have come out to all say exactly the same thing. One of two things, really. Either calling Biden Hitler for doing a speech against fascism, uh, or comparing themselves to Jews. The most direct comparison of which was put out by the amazing Nick Adams. And uh, I, I actually, this is, you know, I'm pretty gullible. When I saw this, I thought it was a fake tweet at first until I saw that everyone was talking about it. This is a banger. I don't think Hitler ever said anything about the Jews that was as straightforwardly evil as what Biden said about me as a Trump supporter last night. Lie after lie after lie. Encouragement to make other people fear me. And we know what fear does to groups. Disgusting. Now, I like this because Nick Adams is one of the slimiest partisans in the world. This guy will say anything, literally anything. Like, this guy would talk about how he is a Jew in the Holocaust as he digs your mass grave. He'll say literally anything. Uh, he said this, in fact. So as evidence to him saying literally anything, he said this, and he deleted it. You know how bad a take has to be for Nick Adams to have to delete it? That's impressive stuff. That's impressive stuff right there. That is, that is magical. Yeah, it's, uh, it's all over the place. Anyway, I thought we could, uh, we could take a hot second and we could go over the, uh, the general attitude held by Republicans in the face of uh, Dark Brandon's uh, magnificent anti-fascist awakening. And what better a way to do that than look at a goddamn Ben Shapiro video? Last time I watched Ben Shapiro, it was actually really boring. Uh, you know, I, I, I wasn't grabbed by it, but I gotta say, you know, were there ever a time I wanted to hear his voice? I want to know how he's going to whinge over this. The reason I want to go over this isn't just for funsies, by the way. It's because this is probably going to be a distillation of all of the things Republicans are going to whinge about when it comes to that speech. And we should, should talk about how to address those points. Uh, I, honest to God, never thought I would see something like this from Joe Biden from really any American president. Baby. Last night, the president of the United States gave the most demagogic, dangerous speech I've ever heard from an American president, truly. And a lot of people out there right now on the left side of the aisle screaming about Donald Trump and his January 6th speech. I really hated Donald Trump's January 6th speech. But what Donald Trump did not do in that speech is declare that half the country was the enemy. He did not declare that half the country was fundamentally opposed to the basis of the country. So this is false. Uh, Donald Trump constantly talked about how Democrats are the enemy of America and the people like all the time, like nonstop. We saw this, but that it was it not it, it not only did it happen, it was unexceptional because he did it all the time. Uh, he talked about how the press was the enemy of the people, which is right out of Hitler's playbook. Uh, he talked about how the Democrats are all Antifa BLM rioters, uh, which means they're against America, that they're not real Americans. He did this all the time. He did this like in a decent portion of his speeches, you know? He attacked, I thought wrongly, the quote unquote political elite who had skewed the election or whatever. But what he didn't do was label half the country people who are just political opponents, his actual enemies. He didn't actually do that on January 6th. And when he talked about the, the press. It's worth pointing out that also uh, Joe Biden didn't do this. Joe Biden said that um, the uh, MAGA Republicans, of which were a, a, a small minority of the Republican Party, he said dishonestly. Uh, uh, Joe Biden just said that they were a threat to democracy. He didn't say they were enemies of him. As the enemies of the people in all of this, the press went nuts. And I said he shouldn't have done that. But that was a, a talk about the press. That wasn't everybody who opposes my agenda deserves the back of the American hand. Uh, Biden didn't say my agenda, he said to undermine democracy. The president and, and all of this in the name of democracy and equality, it was insane. I want to begin 
with the image of the speech. This is going to be the takeaway image. Most people are not going to see the speech. Most people are not going to listen to the speech. There's going to be one takeaway image from the speech. Presidential politics is all about image. It's all about imagistics. Whether you're talking about President Trump getting out of a helicopter and taking off his mask in the middle of COVID, or whether you're talking about Barack Obama standing on a giant stage flanked by the Greek Parthenon recreated in 2008. When you look at this image, the image that you're, you're seeing right now of Joe Biden, this is the single worst piece of presidential image making I have ever seen in my entire life. I disagree. So obviously I'm biased here, but um, I actually think it's fantastic. The reason for that is because um, we're, we need to talk about what motivates people. So Republicans already all believe that Joe Biden is a communist, fascist, deep state, adrenochrome, blah, 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 blah. You know, uh, Republicans are insane. Political mental illness can't really be reached. Uh, as for independents and, um, and left-leaning people, uh, the main issue is that uh, Joe Biden has always lacked a spine. That's the main thing that's held him back. Joe Biden was able to get a record number of votes back in 2020 because people were so afraid of Trump. But the thing he's always lacked is a, is a vision. Is a, is a, the, the, he's, he's, he's failed to give people the impression that he is an aggressive advocate for them. Uh, and this stark image right here, I think, goes a long way towards showing that he means business. Now, again, it is an optics thing. You know, obviously standing in front of red lights and clenching your fist doesn't instantly mean you're actually going to be some hero of the proletariat. But in an, from, a, you know, from an optical perspective, I can actually see this, if nothing else, eliciting interest from people who had written Biden off as like a do-nothing politician. It is not close. This is an astonishingly bad image for the president of the United States, especially when he's declaring, I'm here in defense of democracy, and now I'm going to yell at you about how everyone who opposes me is an enemy of democracy. The, he um, didn't say that, but okay. Uh, let's count the ways in which this is a horrible piece of, I mean, first of all, let's compare it to some other images, just so you see how bad a piece of imagery this is. It's insane. Okay, it's, how about General Lux from... Star Trek, uh, from Star Wars, The Force. Okay, wait, can we get to the actual points? Oh, God, wait, is he, okay, you know, okay, you know what, no, we're going through this. No, we're, go we're going through this. Yeah, all right, Ben, saddle up, Ben. It's Awakens. It's the same image. We're talking about the blood red background. We're talking about the dark outfit, the blood red background, and the people in the background are apparatchiks of the state. Okay, you are talking here about Man in the High Castle, when John Smith is first introduced in the Vauxhall in New York. Wait, wait, you're going to compare to this? What, because there are people behind them? You, you know the president frequently gives speeches with people behind... Okay, sure, yes, okay. I, I, even I made the First Order comparison, but this is, this is a reach. I mean, like, it's this sort of imagery. The people who constructed this image, this, that was not Photoshop, that picture of Joe Biden. That was a not Photoshop image. I mean, Scar from Lion King. It's insane. Scar from Lion King? It's literally just the color red. Okay, it is literally just the color red. Okay, all right, thank you. Also, what what frame of the Lion King is this from? Why is it so washed out with red? Were, di were they like scrolling through the frames of the movie and they were looked like this is right before the, um, the ground opens up underneath him during the Be, Be Prepared song? This isn't even like a, a like a, a key frame. This is just like a, a, a transitional frame. It's the okay, yeah, okay. It's, it's it's like there's a red filter over it. All right, sure. Wait, hold, wait, hold on. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wait, hold on. Um, I I've, I've just got bre breaking breaking word coming in. Uh uh um, another image. Another image that Joe Biden looked like, or something. This would be funnier if I could navigate my computer faster, but I can't, so, you know. Here we go. This is another, another image pulled straight from history. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Joe Biden. Possibly deliberately framing himself exactly like this historic image from Nazi Germany. There we go. There it is, folks. Now do you see? Now do you see how bad the optics were? What are they doing? What are they doing? The answer, by the way, I mean, it's V for Vendetta. It is all the dictators that you have ever seen in film or on screen. <laughs> basically rolled into one and then wrapped into an image. What is his team doing? What is his team doing? Well, I think the answer is they're a very online team. The people who work for him, they spend all day on Twitter. 
And so over the past few weeks, there's been this idea that dark brown. Uh, okay, wait. No, no? I thought the the Republicans were the comparatively um eat like social media savvy ones. Democrat like campaign teams of especially Joe Biden's campaign team historically have been okay. Yeah, all right, uh, whatever. Anton is rising. Dark Brandon, of course, is that meme that originally started <laughs> in China of Joe Biden sitting on a throne made of guns with his lit up eyes backlit by flames. You know, he, he's evil. I think that his team was like, you know what? That was such a cool image, man. It went viral online. Let's just recreate that in real life. And so you end up with this. You end up with the, with the actual picture of Joe Biden. Let's go back to the original. You end up with the actual picture of Joe Biden in this picture. Now, let me describe for people who are just listening what is in this picture. Joe Biden is standing at the podium. There's an upshot. I believe this is from Getty Images. He is screaming at the top of his lungs. He's gripping his fists up in the air. Behind him is Independence Hall, the site of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. Blood red. Blood red. And behind him are two American Marines who are in shadow, except for their white gloved hands. And behind him, there's a, a pale light that looks like. Yeah, it looks fucking dope. He's like, yeah, he's like explaining how cool it looks. He's, he's like doing the every frame of painting, except he's trying to make it sound scary. I like how he keeps saying blood red too, when first of all, this isn't blood red. And it's like, make it look scary, you know, blood red. Because of the way this is lit, it looks like the throne room of the emperor from, from Return of the Jedi. It, it's, it's the worst piece of presidential image making ever. Does it? I thought the throne of the emperor was, wasn't it, wasn't it blue? I could be misremembering. No, no, it's it, there's not even like a like a real color. Like it, it's how the fu how does it look like the throne room of the emperor from Return of the Jedi? It it's completely desaturated. There's just like a like a like a hazy blue light on a like gray metal. Okay, <laughs> all right. I mean, imagine oh, the, the sort of thought that had to go into this. Did he mean? They're sitting around. Did he mean Snoke? Oh, he he meant he meant the Last Jedi, not okay, okay. From they're like, what can we do to make the president really look cool? Well, well, what if we take a historic American site, you know, the site that it really is known for liberty and for and for democracy and legality, and what if we light it blood red, blood red, and we put the president Bad. in front of the blood red site, so it'll be red and black, like the fascist color pattern. Let's do that. And then, what if we actually? front light him so he looks angry and demonic yeah it is worth pointing out by the way because because he you know he's harping on this it is worth pointing out the full the full area was red and blue because like america colors you know it was just the part directly behind him that was but i mean it doesn't really make a difference to me i don't give a shit but um you know the 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 parts that next to him were, were blue they just cropped all the media video feeds uh up close um, doesn't matter to me. I think it's dope. Against that backdrop. And then what if we put a couple of Marines behind him to look like military force is what is backing him? This is a taxpayer sponsored event, by the way. What? You what? It's the president giving a speech. Of course. What the what the fuck do you mean? They're Marines. Of course, it's taxpayer. Fu you, you don't personally. Fu like, do you think Joe Biden's going to like personally like, oh, hey. Hey Jack, uh, I'm doing I'm doing a speech later tonight. Can you? Uh, come he's like like gives them a billfold or something. Yeah, yeah, he's the president. You paid for this. Yes. So Joe Biden gave a speech, and the speech was designed to attack all of his political opponents and treat them as enemies of the state. That's what this speech was designed to do. I think in a very cynical way, because Joe Biden he didn't say that. He said enemies of democracy. So notice how um notice how Ben Shapiro. So Ben Shapiro is aware of the fact that um he's the bad guy here. And you can tell because he never actually points out what Joe Biden said. Ben Shapiro has framed Joe Biden's words in a number of ways, none of them correct. He said that Joe Biden called his political enemies, uh, 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 like um, enemies of the state. He said they're enemies of the state broadly. Um, he said that, um, uh, you know, anyone who opposes his agenda is the enemy. But he didn't say any of those things. Joe Biden simply th uh, said that uh, the MAGA Republicans are a threat to democracy. That's it. So what Joe, uh, sorry, what Ben Shapiro is doing here is, is sort of implicitly validating Joe Biden's point, which is that Ben Shapiro is an enemy to democracy. And you can tell um, because he's not willing to actually confront the talking point right there. He's not willing to actually like acknowledge what's being said. 
um he instead he 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 pivots off he does the you know the the cry bully thing the uh, oh how dare you point out that i'm basically just a fascist you know that makes you the fascist really by saying that we're fascists it makes you the fascist you know like imagine the nazis doing this imagine the nazis doing this if like the um the sdp uh in germany had been like hey yo the nazis are fascists we got a real problem here you know the, the kdp or whatever they're like, hey, you know, this is this is kind of an issue. Uh, these these guys are literal. They're literally Nazis. Did I say SDP? SPD. Sorry. Um, these guys are literal Nazis. You know, they're actual literal Nazis. <laughs> were the Nazis even this cry bully? Uh, yeah, they were. Um, they did the exact same thing. Uh, the Nazis would get them would uh, post inflammatory media, get themselves um, criticized or censored, and then they would cry baby about it. Yeah. Obviously, it was before social media, so the extent of their crybabying wasn't as significant as what people could do today. But um, they did the same basic thing, where they framed the people who opposed them as the actual enemies of the German people and of democracy. They said that the press uh, were enemies of the people that posted lies. Well, they said Jewish lies, you know, but, you know, lies. Uh, uh, to, to um, you know, deny the German people their, um, their, their righteous providence by uh, suppressing the, uh, the Nazi party basically gave you two messages. One, everyone who opposes me is an enemy of the state. And two, violence is wrong. The basic idea here is to raise the temperature. I think this is more likely to result in acts of violence that Joe Biden is then going to use as a case to run in 2022 and 2024. I mean, this is... He said he opposed violence in all forms. So I don't know where we're getting that from. The only... W so notice, by the way, that um, Ben Shapiro here is saying raise the uh the violence like the tone of violence rather than democrats will do violence you know what he's actually saying here who's more likely to result in acts of violence that joe biden is then going to use as a case to run in 2022 and 2020 acts of violence that would be used as a political pretext for biden that would mean republicans are doing the violence ben shapiro is preemptively blaming joe biden for republicans responding to being called fascists by being violent that's what's being said here He's essentially saying, how dare you call us fascists? And now I bet you're, or I bet you're going, I bet it's going to be real convenient when, when the people you called fascists do fascism thing and do violence in favor of fascism. That's real convenient for you, huh? That literally, that's, what, that's what's being said here. 24. I mean, this is extraordinarily dark stuff. We haven't gotten to the content of the speech. Just the imagery Can alone get to it? is extraordinary. Really dark. Really creepy, really fascistic, and man, did he, I mean, th there's a reason that satanic, demonic, and pure evil were all trending on Twitter last day because, man, oh man, the imagery associated with the speech. And you know what? It fits well within the rhetoric of the speech, too. Because what Joe Biden said last night is, as I say, the most dangerous thing I have seen an American president say about half the country ever. Right. So I, um, I looked over the transcript of the speech again the other day, and uh, it's actually completely bulletproof. Um, it's actually a, essentially a flawless speech. The content of the speech is, um, unassailable. Uh, there's, it's, it's, it, 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 it can be defended at every point. Um, it was well constructed in that sense. It was simple. It was direct. It was patriotic. There's just no getting around that. So I'd like it if we actually respond to clips from, okay, it looks like he's going to. Thank you. Ever in my life. Hey, I'm sure there are times, maybe, maybe before that in American history, but I was born in 1984. So I can only tell you what I have seen since 1984. That's fitting. The president of the United States going out there and saying that the half of the country that disagrees with, he has a 38% approval rating, half the country, more than half that disagrees with him, that these are people who are associated with pure evil. Nope, he didn't say any of these words. He just said MAGA Republicans are enemies of democracy. That's it, he's just, ma just making stuff up over here. Find the, uh, find the pure evil section of the Joe Biden speech. He speaks about his fellow Americans. Yeah, by the way, if there are any cons who are watching right now, I have to ask you, do you, do you have to wonder at all why Joe, B uh, Joe Biden, jeez, I'm so fucking tired, man. Any w reason at all why uh, Ben Shapiro needs to do this much framing um, before the speech? Like, why do you have to be primed so hard? And why is he saying things that are objectively incorrect? The way that George W. Bush spoke about Al-Qaeda. So let's, let's actually go through the speech now. We're going to go through it in, in real detail. I want him to speak in his own words. It's 
It's amazing. So this thing opens, remember, it's a taxpayer-sponsored event, which means he's using yeah. all of the power of the office. This yeah. is geriatric Dotard. He's using all the power of the office, including taxpayer dollars, and all the imagery of traditional American republicanism, small r republicanism, in order to prop up a demagogic piece of fascistic speech making. Like, like, look at all this priming that's being done. It's insane. Stay terrified, everyone. Hey, you're watching this? Stay terrified, okay? Hang on every word. We're two thirds of the way through the video and we haven't heard a single word from Joe Biden, you know? So here he was at the very beginning and Jill is walking him out to the podium because he now needs to be walked from place to place as our president. And uh, here's what it sounded and looked like. I think Joe Biden's wife actually likes him instead of Donald Trump's wife. And they frequently try to frame this as some kind of own. Like all of the interactions we've seen between Trump and his wife in person, like in video, have been stiff and inhuman. And Jill and Joe seem to just like get along. <laughs> so I, it's just like a normal old couple, you know, but they try to frame that as some kind of own against him. They're just walking next to each other. Look. There he is. I mean, he can barely walk. She's what? Wait, they're just walking. <laughs> this is. I, I I guess they I guess they have to convince the Republicans watching that Trump's public behavior with his wife is like normal or something. Okay, yeah, all right, whatever. Yeah, okay. She's leading him out there. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. If this doesn't feel like the death of the Republic, you don't know what would. I, He's I in mean, front of Independence Hall. Sure. He can barely raise his hand to, to wave. What? Okay, and then she ushers him to the podium. And, um, and he moves her off, and then he begins to speak. So he starts off by welcoming his fellow Americans. Oh, God, is he going to show? Wait, you're going to show it, right? You're not going to let... Okay, oh, okay. You, again, guys, this signals fear. This signals fear. I hope you understand that. The behavior Ben Shapiro is exhibiting here is an indication that they're afraid of the contents of the speech. If the speech was genuinely bad, they could just play it and react to it. Instead, we need, like the entire video dedicated to priming to get the, uh, the audience in the right mindset to, to, to ignore the content of the speech. And by his fellow Americans, he means everyone who agrees with him. This was a pure campaign speech, but it is laced through with a kind of seething hatred for his fellow Americans. Um, when he says hello, what he actually means is, I hate you Republicans, die. And when he says my fellow Americans, what he actually means is my fellow Americans, but only people who voted for me and everyone else can die. And when he says, it's a great day out today, how are you all doing? What he actually means is, it's a great day unless you're a Republican, in which case you can die. <laughs> that I, I have not seen. Truly, it's despicable. Here's the, here's the President of the United States, oh Captain my God. Newman, over here. My fellow Americans, I speak to you tonight <clears throat> from sacred ground in America. Independence Hall. When he says sacred, he means sacred to Satanists and all Christians and People of Judaic faith can die. Oh, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This is where America made its declaration of independence to the world more than two centuries ago <clears throat> with an idea unique among nations that in America, we're all created equal. Cool. Okay, so. How, wait, wait, wait. How are we going to find a way to complain about this? <laughs> good, wow, good speech. Well, how are we... <laughs> Okay. First of all, you can hear that he's clearing his throat. Oh my God. He's not particularly healthy. But as you can see, this was angry Biden. But there are two versions of Biden what? that are now present. In, there's really three versions of Biden that are present in American public life. There is doddering fool Biden, can't get a sentence out, can barely speak. Nothing he's is wobbling happened. around. His aides are worried he's going to trip over a wire, falling off bikes, and all the rest. And that's one version of Biden. Then you have fake empathy Biden, where he goes into his low voice. He really cares. <sighs> That's the stuff where in complete... If, if the contents of the speech are so heinous, then why on earth is this the video? The inappropriate context, he cites the tragic death of his son in order to try and garner empathy oh for himself my God. while supposedly trying to sympathize with others, right? That's, that's version number two of Biden. And then there's angry, yelly Biden. What we got last night was angry, yelly Biden. That's my favorite. So he, he continues with what he says are the, the, the real message of America. What is the soul? He said he was going to speak about the soul of the nation in front of a blue red background in satanic lighting. Here he was talking about the soul of the nation. What is America really all about? We, the people, we, the people, these two documents and the ideas they embody, equality and democracy, are the rock upon which this nation is built. How? I, ca I can't believe this video. What now, Ben? What now? So the very basis of his speech that equality and democracy are the key values of the United States 
they are some of the key values of the United States, but he's actually using the wrong language. Because when he says equality, what he means is equity. Right? He's oh my God, he's literally doing the mean. When he says equality, what he actually means is equity. And by equity, he means Black Lives Matter and Antifa. Oh my God, he's li he's actually doing the, the, the meme. This is Gamergate tier like media analysis right here. It's beyond pedantry. It's hyper pedantry. Um, Jesus. He's made this very, very clear throughout his presidency. Equity means equality of outcome. It does not mean that you have equal rights under the Constitution. That is not what he cares about. He cares the, the video is done. So by, by, but when he said America was founded equality, he didn't mean the Constitution. What he actually meant is that the founding fathers wrote down that black people should get jobs before white people. It was about equality of mechanisms. And it was equality. That Incredible. That's, that's it. That's literally the whole video. Incredible. Ben, I fucking love you, man. I love you, man. Holy shit. Teal deer tier content right here. Oh my God. What a terrifying speech that must have been for you to have shown literally none of it. Holy shit. Jesus Christ. Here, th here's another one. Will it contain words from Joe Biden? Will it? Uh, it looks like he talked for a second. Shapiro reacts to Biden's remarks on American democracy. I, I, yeah. Here's the thing, Joe Biden, when, when he says that his political opponents are, are the font head of all evil in the universe, when he says that, you have to understand he really likes to send. He likes having these big, complicated conversations. He likes the give and take of American politics, you traitorous bastards, you. I believe in the give and take of politics, in disagreement, in debate, and dissent. We're a big, oh, complicated yeah. country. But democracy endures only if we, the people, respect the guardrails of the republic okay we're fine okay we're finally actually going to respond to a thing that joe biden said that had meaning outside of him saying hello clears throat only if we the people accept the results of free and fair elections only if we the people see politics not as total war but mediation of our differences okay so Ben Shapiro's response here is going to say that actually this is hypocritical because Joe Biden is the most divisive president in the universe or something like that. Democracy cannot survive when one side believes there are only two outcomes to an election. Either they win or they were cheated. And that's where the MAGA Republicans are today. You spent four oh, years and tens of millions of dollars on the theory that either Hillary Clinton won or you were cheated. Nope, that is not true. Hillary Clinton conceded the next day, and the Russiagate investigation uh, found that there actually was Russian interference in the election. That is true. Uh, but r Democrats did not use that as a pretext for attempting to overturn the election. Donald Trump was calling for the election results to be overturned and him to be instated as president two days ago. As of this stream right now, two days ago, two days before this time right now, uh, Donald Trump was on Truth Social demanding that he be reinstated as president. Uh, there is no comparison. I'm sorry, Democrats have not accepted the results of a presidential election that went the other way for them since about 1988. Okay, wait, he's just saying shit. They thought the 2000 election was stolen. They did not accept that George W. Bush was a legitimate president. 2004 was supposedly- Wait, but in, t wait, but in 2000, um, Al Gore conceded- Not Al Gore, sorry, wait. Was it Al Gore back then? Oh God, my brain is melting. Or was it, why am I thinking Kerry? Yeah, Al Gore, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry, my brain. Um. Yeah, Al Gore. Um, Al Gore conceded. There was legitimate fuckery in the uh, 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 the 2000 election. Yeah, Kerry was 2004. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, there was legitimate fuckery in the 2000 election, and the Supreme Court ruling was bullshit. The Supreme Court ruling was literally like, oh yeah, it turns out that these districts and the way in which the votes were counted are unfair, but like, we can't redo it because it would like take too much time to figure out. There's no way for us to fix this it, with the time that we have so like whatever bush wins woo, you know that yeah that's yeah um it's pretty uh pretty pretty gay actually in outgrowth of 2000 and also diebold voting machines in 2016 donald trump was a tool of the russians and it was facebook memes that got him elected don't lecture us about accepting elections when you still say that Stacey abrams is the rightful governor of georgia after she lost by 50,000 votes in her life i have never heard this like he's just making stuff up. i've never heard this um, and any time Republicans uh, go on this tangent, you can ignore them. Like, you can just make fun of them for this. There is no comparison. Their guy, Donald Trump, is the most blatantly um, anti-democratic president we've had essentially ever, really, in the history of this country. Um, nobody else has ever shown so much of a callous disregard for the, um, the rules of a democracy. 
And uh, in order to like scapegoat and avoid um, and, and, and avoid that, uh, they, they have to be like, um, well, do you remember how Hillary Clinton complained about how she lost the election? That's exactly the same as Donald Trump leading an insurrection, spending the next several years complaining that he should actually be reinstated as president. Like, there's no comparison. Donald Trump is so ready to call foul on the results of elections that when he won in 2016, he immediately said millions of illegals voted for Hillary Clinton and then spent taxpayer money on proving it and they weren't able to find a single vote. That's how, that's how ready he is to cry foul every single time. Even after winning, he said uh, he would have been able to win by an even larger margin if it weren't for all the fake uh, illegal immigrants voting, uh, and he still cried. You know? And then they, were, then they spent millions and millions of your dollars uh, failing to prove a single vote uh, was miscounted. Last gubernatorial race. Yes, it's really bad when you have both sides rejecting the results of elections. But let's stop pretending that this is a one-sided issue. It is not. Remember when I said that his response here was going to be to call the Democrats hypocrites? It is bad when both sides do it. Democrats seem to have a rule. It's that it's really bad when you do it. It's great when we do. So he continues along these lines. Right? You, can't, you, can't, you can't love democracy only when you win. This, this line is so astonishing coming from this leader of this party. See, yeah, it's just hypocrisy arguments. It's all whataboutism. You'll notice um, this is what Trump supporters will do overwhelmingly. They don't actually defend Trump. They'll just lie about Democrats to make it seem as though they're both this bad. Um, that's a really, really, really common tactic. It's why I hate the hypocrisy arguments, because like it, w when people when people get down to hypocrisy arguments, they'll make up anything about the opposition in order to justify their behavior. And you never actually talk about what you want to talk about. Uh, ben Shapiro distinguishes himself from other Republicans by being this like, you know, I think Donald Trump was aggressive and I think that he was, uh, uh, um, you know, kind of a buffoon and not very smart. You know, Ben Shapiro plays that line. The issue is he's not actually any different from like Marjorie Taylor Greene or Laura Boebert. The only difference is the rhetorical framing. Marjorie Taylor Greene will defend Trump directly. Ben Shapiro will do so dishonestly by only talking about Democrats and drawing a false equivocacy. That's the difference. But the, ultimately, the goal of both of these behaviors is the same. There's no real difference. His behavior is maybe more intelligent. His method of defense is, you know, maybe a, a, a slightly more sophisticated. But outside of that, there's no difference. Here we go. You can't love your country only when you win. It's fundamental. American democracy only works only if we choose to respect the rule of law and the institutions that were set up in this chamber behind me. Only if we respect our legitimate political differences. I will not stand by and watch. I will not the will of the American people be overturned by wild conspiracy theories. I will not stand by and watch elections in this country stolen by people who simply refuse to accept that they lost. It's going to be another hypocrisy argument. I don't I, I actually would be surprised if at any point in this video, Ben Shapiro makes any argument that isn't just, well, actually, you're just as bad because of this thing that I made up. I will not stand by and watch the most fundamental freedom in this country, the freedom to vote and have your vote counted and be taken from you and the American people. There are people, did you know, who, who are actively attempting to prevent you from voting. Now, one of the things that's amazing here is that there has been a bipartisan possibility of a bill that's been brought up by Mitch McConnell in the Senate, and that is change the Electoral Count Act so that there is no possibility of rejecting certified votes from the states. The Democrats won't pass it because they want to run on these issues. They want to pretend that their opponents hate democracy and then run on that. What? Can, can I see any evidence indicating Democrats are the ones who don't want to, um, to vote on a bill that would prevent the, uh, the elector count from voting in line with the uh, state's popular vote? Is there, is there any, anything, anything indicating that at all? The fact that McConnell is the one putting it forward makes me think that the bill probably doesn't actually do that. Democrats want to amend the electoral vote, uh, the electoral count act. Republicans are blocking it in the Senate. Okay, so it's probably got a bunch of extra bullshit tacked on. The electoral count act. Let's see. The electoral count act of 1887. That was a while ago, guys. I don't, I don't think that's what we're talking about. That's, uh, that, that seems a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. The electoral count reform act. There we go. All right, that's okay. There we go. That sounds better. Raises the threshold to lodge an objection to electors to at least one-fifth of the duly chosen and sworn members of both the House of Representatives and the Senate. I love looking at things. Here. 
Proposed reforms for the Electoral Count Act draw broad support. Okay. A newly unveiled proposal aiming at reforming the Electoral Count Act, a widely criticized 135-year-old law governing the process of casting and counting electoral college votes, has garnered support. Do 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 do. Do do do. Thus far, the proposed changes have received broad support, though some of the left say they don't go far enough. Okay. So what, how, how is it the Democrats not passing it? A bipartisan Senate group announced a deal on reforming the Electoral Count Act. I'm not seeing anything here indicating that Republicans want to pass it, but Democrats don't. I guess we could just make shit up about that. When he says, this line is so amazing coming from the Democrats, you can't love democracy only when you win. You know what the polls show? The polls show over and over and over again that Republicans remain patriotic. They say they love the country even when Democrats win. Democrats change their opinions on how much they love the country based almost solely on when they are winning and losing. So this is true in one, um, in one small respect, which is that when, when Republicans talk about loving America, they don't mean the America that exists today. Listen to the way Donald Trump campaigned and the way he talked about America. According to him, this place is a shithole. America has fallen apart. We're ruinous, you know. We're filled with crime and corruption. Our, everything is, is broken and falling apart. The America they like is a kind of imagined white nationalist America, you know, like the, 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 the 1950s imagery um, that flashes in their head, the white picket fence and the uh, well-mowed lawns and the ethnically homogenous neighborhoods. When they say they love America, they, there's an idea of an America that they love. But um, Republicans have consistently been extremely aggressive against the existing America when they campaign in ways that Democrats haven't. Seriously, do you guys remember back in 2020, Biden and Trump campaigning? Whenever Biden talked about America, he would be like, this is a great country, a great country of promise and value and so on and so forth. And Donald Trump would talk about how this country is falling apart. The Democrats are tearing it to the ground. Our cities are falling apart. They're full of the homeless, their drugs. Ever. Like the, um, the, the, the fascist mantra relies on fear mongering to their constituency in order to get them elected. And you can't fear monger if you talk about things being all right. Democrats tend to be a lot more optimistic during the election cycle, which I don't always agree with, by the way. It's not like I care that much about patriotism. Yeah, in this very speech, Biden talked up America quite a bit, you know. Um, but the, um, the, the, the America that Republicans talk up is the America they want to return to. Hence, you know, make America great again, implying that it's not currently great. This has been a longtime feature of American politics. This is true under every Pew, Gallup, and, and every other poll that's ever been taken. When it comes to feelings of patriotism, Republicans are very consistent that they love the country. Democrats only love the country when Barack Obama is president. And then when Donald Trump wins, boom, the patriotism just drops off the table. When he says... The reason for that is because Democrats, when asked if they love the country, are thinking about the country as it actually exists, and Republicans are thinking about the image of America they have in their head. Does that make sense? So to them, when they're asked about it, it's unchanging, because the America in their head exists in the past, in a fantasy. Um, but if you ask a left-leaning person how they feel about America, they're going to think about problems that America experiences today. Uh, homelessness, uh, uh, you know, the opium epidemic, uh, war, poverty, you know, they'll think about actual issues. Um, it's because they're not operating on the kind of like fascist foundational myth. That we have to work to respect the rule of law and the institutions that were set up in the chamber. He despises those institutions. He has called for the end of the filibuster, for example. He is somebody who says that the Supreme <laughs> What? <laughs> the filibuster is not an essential bedrock of American democracy. First of all, Joe Biden is not exactly a crazy advocate for getting rid of the filibuster. And second of all, the filibuster isn't in the in the in the fucking constitution. It's not an institution of America. It's not a pillar of American democracy. What the fuck is like it, it, what, the, what the what does that mean? Supreme Court of the United States is not doing its job unless it just greenlights what he is doing. He has done stuff he himself has declared legal. When has he said that? But he's an institutionalist, don't you know? I mean, this is gaslighting at the very, very highest level. Again, when he says that there are people in this country who are attempting to suppress the right to vote, that is such a lie. What exactly is the evidence that he has that millions of votes are being not counted and thrown out? Well, whew, wow. Oh, God. That's like a whole video segment on its own. I, if I try to go through all of them, it's going to be tough for me to even remember. I mean, okay. 
Um, we've got the efforts to institute um, voter ID registration, even though there's no evidence at all of voter fraud being a problem and voter ID being something that's generally less available to the poor. Um, we've got the systemic removal of uh, voting uh, 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 voting locations in areas that are um, poor in some parts of uh, of some states. The stuff that happened in uh, in Texas and Georgia. Um, yeah, the voter ID laws in Georgia and Texas have had a tendency to specifically target the types of IDs or, or, or the areas um, that uh, have more people of color. Uh, we have hey, we have. Um, we have thousands of black voters just getting purged from voter rolls. Do you, you guys remember that? There are literally just U.S. citizens who can legally vote, who just got purged from voter rolls. Thousands of them, overwhelmingly poor people of color, just removed from them for no reason at all. Just gone. They just like, whoa, nope. So they cast a vote because they haven't been told they've been purged from the voter rolls. Uh, and then it's their vote didn't count. They're just, they're just not voters anymore. Yeah, just, whoop, gone. Um, there's the fact that um, the people of Florida wanted to um, uh, 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 allow uh, 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 votes for former uh, prisoners, for criminals, uh, and then immediately Ron DeSantis stamped down and um, uh, redlined it with um, uh, by by hastily with his you know Republican backed legislator passing um, uh, legislation to make it harder harder to do that. Just arrested twenty guys who, as far as I can tell, seem to have legally had the right to vote. Uh, uh, if not by some arcane, like, you know, rules lawyering that might actually, like, get them out of whatever legal trouble they're in. Uh, there's the whole them denying the 2020 election results and literally Donald Trump leading a mob on the Capitol, uh, threatening to hang Mike Pence because he wasn't doing something he couldn't do, which was delay the attempt to certify the election result. Like, it's like, there's so much. If you filled up, like, a Google Doc of efforts being made by Republicans to uh prevent like to fuck over the democratic process you could fill pages and pages and pages, 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 pages. you could an, a huge list I'm, I'm remembering like a fraction of a fraction of it it's massive it's enormous it's insane yeah you have all those the stuff that came out with the jan 6 committee of donald trump on the phone literally like telling local republican officials that they need to find more votes for him so he can win the election like that's not explicit corruption um yeah you know just um Phenomenal stuff there. But yeah, gaslighting. Yeehaw. It was Republican officials in Georgia who certified the election. It was Republican officials in Arizona who certified the election. It was Republican officials in Wisconsin and in Pennsylvania who certified the election. It was Vice President Mike Pence who certified the election. The and what happened to Vice President Mike Pence exactly when he, um, when he, when he did that? Was, was there any response to that? Did, any, did anything happen there? No? Just, just went without a hitch? Vice President to Donald Trump. It was Mitch McConnell who certified the election. But he labels all those people MAGA Republicans. All of them. Every single one of those people. Because again, it's not about the thing he says. He didn't label anyone in particular a MAGA Republican. He just said they exist. He didn't specifically call out anyone apart from Trump. It's about, it's about the people who oppose him are the enemy of the country. Okay, and, and you can tell this because then he links it to his current political program. Because then about three quarters of the way through the speech, it just turns into him listing off all of the amazing things that he has done. Because if you oppose those amazing things that he's done, this means you're an enemy of the Republic. He didn't say so he talked that. about how he is the light that has emerged from the darkness. He, in his grim, elderly visage, barely able to speak without either being jacked up to heights of, of adrenaline. That make he didn't, him, he's, we're, we're editorializing a bit here, Ben, do you think? Nearly incomprehensible. Or he falls asleep. Like, an, like he's suffering from narcolepsy. He is saying... That he is the light that has emerged from, he's the messianic figure that has emerged from the darkness, he said. What the fuck is this projection, dude? Jesus Christ. Um, and when, and when Biden said, I love America, what he actually meant was, like, Jesus, fuck. Again, the teal deer style of video analysis here. Flanked, I'm, I can't get over this, flanked by a blood red independence hall. Oh my God. Throughout our history, America's often made the greatest progress coming out of some of our darkest moments, like your hearings in that bullhorn. Wait, Ben, Ben, why aren't you showcasing an example of Joe Biden three quarters of the way into the speech tooting his own horn and talking about how if you don't support his policies, you're an enemy of the people? Is it because that didn't happen and you literally just completely made that up? Is that the reason why 98% of these videos are empty editorializing and the rest of it is just totally innocuous shit being said by Joe Biden? Okay, so here I think we should point out that about two thirds of the way through the speech, there was a guy in a bullhorn who was audible on the audio, and what he was screaming was F. Joe Biden. And that's who he was screaming. And Joe Biden says that the darkest moments of our history are the things coming out of that bullhorn. 
People saying they don't like him. That's the darkest moments of our history. And you know what the progress is that came? Well, greatest progress coming out of some of our darkest moments, like you're hearing to that bullhorn. So considering the fact that he's criticizing MAGA Republicans for being anti-democracy, and the guy on the bullhorn is, let's be real, a MAGA Republican who's anti-democracy, it seems fitting that he would point there and say, yeah, like that. The, the guy who's screaming, uh, fuck Joe Biden over there, the guy who probably believes that the election was stolen, you know, like that. Like, it's, it's, pre it's pretty bad. I mean, he even says that guy has the right to do it, you know? Yeah. Moments of our history are the things coming out of that bullhorn. People saying they don't like him. That's the darkest moments of our history. And you know what the progress is that came out of the darkest moments of our history? That progress was him. He is the progress. He is the man on the donkey riding. This is, this is so pathetic, dude. I'm like, I'm not joking. I'm not just trying to play this up for the sake of the video. He's not saying anything here. This is, um, this is just pearl clutching to the extreme. There's no actual analysis taking place here. Um, because again, they're terrified. They are genuinely scared of the speech that Joe Biden gave. That's the reason why he's not showing any of it. That's the reason why he's so obsessively avoiding actually showing the parts that he keeps referring to. In any, like, look at what I do when I disagree with somebody. If there's a video or like something Trump said or whatever, I don't just talk about it and then show a two second clip and then go, um, I know that clip looked fine, but actually it's evil for this reason. I show the whole thing. That's what I do because I'm not a hack you know, but in his case, he has to deliberately direct people away from the content that is apparently so evil. If it's so bad, why can't he just play it through? Why can't he just show it and go like, wow, that was really bad, wasn't it? Why can't he do that? That would be an effective strategy. It'd be low effort, wouldn't it? It would be, you know, uh, authentic. ...into Judea. He, he is, you, you thought he was just a venal, corrupt old politician who's lusted after power his entire life now that he's gained it is gripping it with the fiery force of a thousand suns. You thought that's who he was. Like, what is this? But no, actually, he is a light bringer. Like his predecessor, he's a light bringer. He's not, nothing here so he compares is being himself said. to, once again, the MAGA Republicans. And uh, it, it, amazing stuff here. MAGA Republicans look at America and see carnage and darkness and despair. They spread fear and lies. Lies told for profit and power. True. But I see a different America. An America with an unlimited future. An America that's about to take off. I mean, that's an amazing statement. So his opponents see carnage, darkness, and despair. This entire speech has been about how half the American population wishes to destroy the democracy in which we live. Yes. It's all hypocrisy arguments. It's all hypocrisy arguments. 100% of it. That's it. That's all he has. But don't worry. It's his opponents who see carnage and darkness and despair. Well, they believe the election was stolen. So, yeah. Also, again... If you ever, if you, if you ever want to ask yourself, is this a legitimate comparison, then you, what you should do is you should transpose the current arguments of the MAGA Republicans onto their closest ideological neighbor, the Nazis. The Nazis did see darkness and despair everywhere because they obsessively promoted the idea of a Judeo-Bolshevist cult uh, destroying Western civilization and Germany uh, by controlling the banking markets and making them lose World War I and blah, 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 blah. So, if somebody from the SDP had said, hey, my opponents, the Nazis, see darkness and despair everywhere, and also they're enemies of democracy, those two statements would be true. They don't contradict each other. You understand? Sorry, did I do it again? I did it again! Fuck! Ah! Uh, I, I, it's, it's acronyms, man. I can't remember it with the German ones because P and D are both consonants. I can remember it with AOC because AOC, the, the vowels in the middle, you know, AOC. Um, I guess I can do GDP, but I, I've said GDP so many times. Yeah. I need to have them like Sharpie directly onto my monitor or something. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Good point. Uh, good point, by the way. When, um, good point. When, uh, 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 a is a vowel. A isn't a vowel. A isn't a vowel. A isn't a vowel like, oh, nah. Real vowels are in the middle of acronyms. If there's a vowel in the middle of the acronym, then the vowel on the side is a consonant. <laughs> it's, ling it's just basic linguistics. Read Chomsky. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the CIA, like the I is the vowel. <laughs> 
<laughs> Guys, I'm very sleep deprived. Please, God, I'm struggling to keep it together. I've I've tried my best. I'm holding I'm holding it together with like chewing gum right now. Okay, I'm 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 trying. Look, what I was going to say was they keep trying to pretend that Republicans represent uh fifty percent of the country, which they certainly don't. Uh, how many people voted for Trump? Wasn't it like 71 million? Uh, 74 million for Trump, 81 million for Biden. God, that's wacky. Uh, 74 million for Trump. So what? That's like uh, it's a quarter of the voting population. A little less than a, or a little more than a quarter, I think. Yeah, not 50 percent. He's hopeful. You see, he's an optimist. What makes him optimistic? What makes him optimistic is that he has spent more money than any president in the history of the world. What makes him optimistic is that he has rammed through you. What? 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 He spent more money than any other president in the history of the world? I think, I think if you adjust for inflation, I'm going to assume that the costs associated with, like, World War II probably... What? what? I don't even know. This is probably some whining about, like, the um, COVID stimulus or something. I don't know. It's stupid. Useless package after useless package bringing us to 40-year highs in inflation and the brink of a very serious recession in the United States. What makes him optimistic is things like pulling out of Afghanistan and subjecting 38 million people to the predations of the Taliban. So notice what he's doing right here is this is a deflection. So the argument that he's making, the speech that he's giving uh, up there on that podium uh, is about democracy. It's about the democratic processes. And what Shapiro is doing here is he's pulling us back into the litany of uh, uh, bumper sticker uh, Republican talking points uh, that you have to zoom through. And individually, most of these points are really, really, really stupid. Um, on the inflation point, if the inflation is just Joe Biden spending, then why is it exactly that um, the uh, inflation is hitting the world over right now and not just America? Maybe there are global factors that aren't just us, possibly. Uh, as for the broad spending stuff, uh, sometimes the government has to spend money. For instance, if we didn't spend money on COVID stimulus, is it possible that the downstream economic consequences of mass poverty and starvation from people who lose their jobs but have nothing else might have been worse than the money that was spent by the government? Most economists say yes. That's why basically every government had some kind of COVID uh, stimulus package. Uh, when we're talking about the, uh, the packages that he's putting forward, uh, Joe Biden's package is uh, huge and girthy. Uh, I just don't see the issue. Uh, you can you can move through all these points one by one, and they're generally pretty stupid. Um, but he's trying to pull you away from the actual point of the speech here. He's trying to distract you from the fact that uh, Joe Biden is spitting truth. I mean, all these things make him optimistic. It turns out that optimism is wrapped up. If you're optimistic about the country, it's because you love Joe Biden. It's just that simple. Here we go. He never said that. He didn't talk about any of his policy proposals there. Just look around. I believe we could lift America from the depths of COVID. So we passed the largest economic recovery package since Franklin Delano Roosevelt. There I believe go. we could build a better America. So we passed the biggest infrastructure investment since President Dwight D. Eisenhower. And I believe we could create, we could create a clean energy future and save the planet. So we passed the most important climate initiative ever, ever, ever. Nailed it. Right, so the light is his policy. It turns out the cure is not. Say so, yes. I know this may sound crazy, but when a politician is giving a speech and they're making an argument that they can make the country better, it is usually because of the policies they want to put forward. That is true. That is typically a thing politicians will do. When they say this country can be better, it's usually tied to things they want to do to the country. It's a very secretive politician tactic exhibited by only a few politicians, such as every politician to have ever existed anywhere on Earth at any time period in any country. Thank you for pointing that out. Saying that people win elections, that's not the cure. The cure is not even rejecting Donald Trump. The cure, according to Joe Biden, is embrace all of the things I want. No. Joe Biden was talking about things that can be done to make the country a better place to live in, in that portion of the speech. But the speech broadly is about the threat to democracy, which is about rejecting Donald Trump and his ideology. This portion of the speech that Joe Biden gave is just indicating that there is optimism that can be held for America outside the conspiracism and anti-democratic activism that the MAGA Republicans represent. It's a juxtaposition, see? 
because they, the MAGA Republicans, talk and act as though the only thing that can be done in order to better America is to do stuff that involves destroying our democracy. Joe Biden's trying to provide an alternative narrative that you can actually improve America with, you know, policy, you know, maybe, possibly. And if you don't embrace all of the things that I want, this means you are standing with the white supremacists and the extremists. He makes this absolutely explicit in the next minute of his speech. Go for it. Show no me. matter what the white supremacists and the extremists say, I made a bet on you, the American people, and that bet is paying off, proving that from darkness, the darkness of Charlottesville, of COVID, of gun violence, of insurrection, we can see the light. Light is now visible. Light that will guide us forward. Not only in words, but in actions. Actions for you, for your children, for your grandchildren, for America. Even in this moment. Hey, stop it right there. What, what was the issue with that? Also, at no point here did he say, if you don't support my climate bill, that means you're a white supremacist? That just that requires inference that's just not justified by the text of the speech. When he says, well, I mean, again, the juxtaposition is a binary, manichaean ju juxtaposition. There are the white supremacists, the MAGA extremists. In regards to why Ben brought up Stacey Abrams, it's because there's a trail that started, or trial that started in April about her election involving voter suppression, which seems to be true back in 2018. So it's funny that he tried to use her as an example of hypocrisy when she literally had the election stolen from her. I don't know about this. Election lawsuit backed by Stacey Abrams go to trial in Georgia. Oh. Well, I guess if, you know, Republicans want to complain about this, the critical difference would be that uh, Trump's campaign filed like 78 lawsuits. They all got shot down and then he tried to storm the Capitol. Whereas if Stacey Abrams has a grievance about the legitimacy of her election, she takes it to court and sticks to the court uh, as the, uh, the, the vehicle uh, by which she wants to, um, to challenge the legitimacy of her election. Seems like a fair thing to do. I'm OK with that. Brian Kemp was the Georgia Secretary of State in 2018 when he was running for governor. Kemp purged voter rolls in Georgia for his own election. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, Stacey Abrams' opponent was in charge of the election against Stacey Abrams. Oh, yeah, okay. Good system. Gotcha. And oh, again, this is, this is one of the other reasons why you should never, like, let them pull the hypocrisy card. Because every bad thing they do, you've done a good thing that they'll lie about to make it seem like a bad thing. Like, that's, that's the difference right there. Um, that like it's 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 exactly like I mean you've seen this online haven't you like a Republican politician will be outed as a pedo and then in the comments there will be Republicans being like yeah well the left has no right to to complain with them like grooming kids into LGBT ideology and you have to debunk so much shit to really address that argument but understand like from that perspective what they're essentially saying is those people can overlook Republican politicians raping children because in their minds. They've thought like, OK, yeah, well, maybe a few Republicans do that, but all Democrats are effectively doing the same thing with LGBT ideology. And this is a perspective that is so brain damaged that for, like there's there, like, again, like grab a rock. Right. It's it's so fundamentally incompatible with reality there, because that's that's the goal of stuff like this from Ben Shapiro. Right. Um, there's no way to be sane and correct and Republican. It's not possible. This isn't like a difference in, in, uh, in, 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 in like uh, interpretation of data or whatever. The Republican Party is rooted in conspiracy at this point. There's no legitimacy, um, no political legitimacy outside the adoption of different ethical axioms. Like, for example, the moral belief in purging degeneracy or the moral belief in, I don't know, uh, a white supremacy or something like there are axiomatic positions that you could take to justify the lies that a Republican needs to engage in to push their ideology. But these aren't axiomatic beliefs that I respect, uh, nor should you, nor should anyone, you know, uh, a person who thinks that murder is OK, actually might have a different axiomatic position, but that won't save him from the chair. Uh, ben Shapiro, along with essentially all Republican pundits at this point, they exist to insulate the Republican mind from any information or perspective that might lead them to realize that they're in a cult. And a big part of that is training them to reflexively uh, uh, utilize the hypocrisy argument anytime something bad is uh, unavoidably confronted. Anytime the Republicans do something obviously, objectively, undeniably bad, their brain has to immediately fight, the synapses fire, and their response has to be, 
oh, well, Democrat do this. It doesn't matter if the Democrat actually did the same thing. They probably didn't. They usually lie. Ben lied on every point on his, like, hypocrisy run through. Uh, but it keeps them from the other synapse firing outcome, which might be, you know, oh, wow, I'm in a fucked up cult. Dangerous stuff. I made a bet that they were going to lose. And the proof that they're losing is that I, the Lightbringer, have done all of these things. Wait, what? Joe Biden did not say, I made a bet that they were going to lose. He said, I made a bet on you people, as in, I made a bet on the worth of you people. Wait, can we go back to that? Uh, we're at 9.55. Listen to the way this is delivered. And that bet is paying off. I made a bet on you, the American people, and that bet is paying off. Yeah, he's talking to the American people. Bro he's not saying he made a bet he would win the election. He's saying that he bet on the well-being of the moral worth of the American people, and they've supported him in his goal of making the country better, and therefore the bet is paying off. He's saying he believed in you. That's what he's saying here. This is like, this is the dishonesty. Ben will just lie about the contents of the speech that he's shown. No sane person could interpret that as Joe Biden saying, yeah, I made a bet that I would win the election. He would bet on the hard work, on the, the character, the integrity of the American people. All of my policies are the solution. If you don't back my policies, obviously, you're with Charlottesville. Obviously, you He didn't say that. No sane interpretation of his speech leads to that. Love gun violence. Obviously, you're a person who loves COVID. You're a COVID lover. I mean, these things are true, but he didn't say it. I would have said it if I was president. I do think that Ben Shapiro is a COVID lover who is in favor of gun violence and who supports Charlottesville. Because he is the person who has brought us all together for our children, for our grandchildren, for America. And if you don't believe that, then you're the enemy. You, you are, don't you feel the light? Don't you feel the happiness and the optimism? So fitting with my ongoing uh, pointing out that you can only really take these positions if you're mentally ill. Here's some mental illness. Again, does it not remind you guys of Gamergate analysis? Like, we're, like Anita Sarkeesian would say something like, and when women are only displayed in video games, in, in like sexy lingerie, it reinforces the idea that they're there for sex appeal pr predominantly. And then like some guy would pause for a second and lose their shit into the microphone for like three minutes. He does look like Adam from YMS here. Well, the same expression as Adam. Not, they don't look the same, but it's, it's Adam's like, like expression, you know? Yeah. So Ben, so I, I, guess, I guess I don't know why I was hoping Ben would go over the content of the speech because he lied about the speech when he wasn't showing the speech. And then when he did show the speech, he lied about that too. So there wasn't really like a change in the relationship between his words and the speech, like whether or not, he showed it, yeah. Sure. Because he, cause he has to do this, you know? He has to do this. It's like Rush Limbaugh shit, right? You know, even if the stuff you're mad about isn't that bad, you know, you, 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 gotta, you gotta rile them up yourself. Oh, oops, I double-clicked. Don't you! <laughs> you can tell he had Hollywood ambitions. The, the political lack of acumen here is astonishing. The moral blindness here is even more astonishing. And again, that combined with the worst optics I've ever seen from a, a major American figure leads me to say this is the worst speech I've ever seen in my entire life. I'm sure. Man, I really want to debate people about this. I want to debate big people about this. It's just such a... Because I know that the Republican Party is just all fascist or like unknowingly fascist at this point, and that a lot of them would just Pepe post their way around the argument. But with people like Ben Shapiro, he does like pretend to care about empiricism. And ah, man, I want to want to talk with them about the speech. Maybe one of these days. Anyway, you guys get the gist. I hope you guys understand what I mean when I say that Stuff like this indicates fear. You know what I mean? The fact that he has to lie about everything in the speech. He has to consistently prime his audience. He has to frame things in such ridiculously dishonest and hyperbolic ways, such as to pull away from the actual points being made. If you can't address an argument directly, you know, if you can't directly address the points being made, 
it's always an indication of weakness. Um, if you know, if, if, a, if a set of positions is so laughable that you think it's better to just sort of shrug them off or whatever, uh, there are times when that can be legitimate, though it's often a misused tactic, in my opinion, undeservedly used. But in this case, that isn't even what was being done. Uh, uh, ben Shapiro wasn't laughing off uh, Joe Biden's arguments. He was taking them seriously in the fake fantasy, dishonest version of the arguments that he was, you know, the, you know, framing them to be. Um, yeah, they're afraid. Yeah, true. Exactly. Thank you, Kajum. Soda! What Biden is actually saying is that Antifa should burn your house down. True. Kind of reminds me of my debate with Caleb Maupin, where I say that I think people who defend Stalin are basically just fascists. And he was like, so you would have punched Martin Luther King Jr. You would have punched Martin Luther King Jr. in the face with that language, wouldn't you? Yeah, you would have, you would have killed Einstein. I bet you want to give me a big spanking. Something like that. I vaguely remember it being like that. <laughs> 